Good morning. I'm so glad to see you here. I know we have lots of people traveling, but I'm glad that you are with us. And if you are joining us online, thank you for being with us as well. I just got tickled because, you know, that countdown clock, I thought this at traditional too. You know, it gets to 10. In my house, Derek's all like, 10, 9. I would love if one Sunday y'all are like, 8, 7. Y'all just can't wait for the service to start. It's coming. I can feel that. This is Memorial Day weekend, and tomorrow is Memorial Day, and we love what it represents, that we have an opportunity where we can honor those who paid that ultimate, ultimate excuse me, sacrifice by giving their life to help keep us protected, keep us safe here in the United States of America. And Pastor sent me a couple weeks ago a video that I had never seen before, and he wanted to share this with us for Memorial Day. So we're going to watch that now. If you'll please turn your attention to one of the screens. We would, we would like, like to salute, salute all, all the men, the men and, women and women who have served, served in, in every, every branch, branch of our armed, armed services, services, beginning, beginning with, with the National, National Guard, Guard Bureau. Bureau. I am privileged to introduce the Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, 
Admiral James A. Winnefeld, Jr. And I am honored to introduce the distinguished chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey. Recently, I received a note from a mother whose daughter, a soldier, is buried at Arlington. She wanted to share some of the things she learned at the loss of her daughter. She learned that the grief never really goes away. At any instant, a smell, a color, a song, a date on the calendar can take you right back to that first raw moment when everything changed. She learned that if there's any secret to grieving, it's that there can be room for sorrow and joy sadness and hope to exist in the same space at the same time. And she learned that grief is not a lack of faith nor a sign of weakness. It's the price of love. That love, she says, is yours to hold forever. Memorial Day is foremost about remembrance of America's sons and daughters from every corner of our country in every branch of service who gave their lives so that we may live free. But it's also about love and about hope. It gives us, the living, a chance to cherish the freedom we may now hold dear and embrace the future we may now dare dream. It gives us the opportunity, all citizens everywhere, to recommit to our national purpose to secure the blessings of liberty. Let it also renew a national commitment to usher home the men and women returning to our communities and firmly stand by those still supporting our missions around the globe. Behind every one of them are their pillars of love and hope at home. A parent, a spouse, a son, a daughter, a community, all doing their part to take care of America. So I'd now like to ask all of the family members of those who serve here and at home to please stand and accept our deepest gratitude for your service and sacrifice. On behalf of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and a grateful nation, we thank you. I think that's a beautiful short video. Um, I remember when I was little, I was confused, and I asked my mom, I said, what's the difference between Veterans Day and Memorial Day? And I remember her telling me that Veterans Day is when the soldiers were able to come home and hang up their uniform, and Memorial Day is for the soldiers who were never able to come home and hang up their uniform. We did this at the first service. I want to do it again at this service. Um, some of us know people who get paid that ultimate, ultimate sacrifice by giving their life for protecting all of us. If you know of anyone and you want to honor their memory, would you please stand in honor and in memory of them? Will you please help me honor them? Thank you so much, and I hope that everyone has a wonderful Memorial Day tomorrow. Um, but keep in mind what we are honoring on that day. It is a day of fun for many of us, um, but let's always keep those memories alive. Memories are powerful. Thank you for being here, and I hope that you have come ready to sing praises to God. Will you please stand and sing with us?
In the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. The Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Yeah, love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Take this rebel heart and make it yours. Father, I no longer want to run. You've broken my resistance with your love. And drowned it underneath the crimson spill. So in this rebel This rebel heart belongs to you. Help me lay the renegade to rest. And turn the stone inside me back to flesh. And hold me till my best defenses fall. And watch this rebel heart surrender. to you. 
God, that is the story of each of us and all of us. Father, we all have rebel hearts. We were rebels against you. Lord, but your love sent your son to die on a cross in our place. The punishment, the pain that we deserved is what your son gladly bore for us. Father, a sacrifice of love so that we might enjoy a relationship with a God who loves us, cares for us, has been faithful over and over again to us. So, Father, this morning as we read your word, as we study scripture God remind us of your faithfulness of your love but God more than anything take the parts of our hearts our lives that still desire to rebel that God we we want to seek ourselves. we want to seek our own interests our own benefits and Lord turn them into something that glorifies you. God, speak to us through your word like only you can in this time. We love you. We thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. It is now time for Children's Church. If you have a little one who is four years old through the second grade and you'd like for them to attend, if you'll please send them to that middle back door. And parents, please remember after this service to go downstairs and sign them out. Well, good morning. Good to see each and every one of you with us this morning. If you are visiting with us today, we are honored to have you with us and uh, are so grateful that you've chosen to come be a part of today's worship service. Well, we are in the midst of uh, a weekend that is a great time for us. There we go. We are on our Memorial Day celebration, and we are grateful to everyone that has served in our armed forces. And if you are related to someone uh, that has given their life in the uh, pursuit of freedom for our nation, Uh, We are grateful to you, and uh, we know that their sacrifice was also a sacrifice for you. Today, we're going to ask you to remember. Just take time and reflect and remember all of those that have gone before and have given their lives for the freedoms that you and I enjoy here in our nation. A lot of people don't realize, but uh, so, well, the uh, Memorial Day uh, actually came about because of the Civil War. And a lot of people uh, never think about the fact that uh, during the Civil War, Americans lost more military personnel than in any war that has come since then or any war that we were involved in prior to that time. Civil War began in April of 1861 and lasted until May of 1865. And as a result of the Civil War, uh, there were two things that took place here in America. First of all, it led to the establishment of our national seminaries, uh, cemetery, not seminaries, cemeteries. And uh, we actually have some people in our church that have loved ones that are buried in these national cemeteries. And we certainly honor them and uh, any of you Uh, that may have loved ones placed there. But it also led to the establishment of what started 
uh, at what is being called, what ha was called as Decoration Day. Many of you think decoration started right here on Santa Mountain, uh, and uh, in, that is in, in part true. Uh, but uh, after the Civil War, Americans just realized that we had so many of our national servicemen that had given their lives uh, that it actually led to what they called a decoration day. Now, as Congress began to debate these issues, I think the, uh, the debate actually heated up in 1968, uh, but by 1971, Congress had declared that Memorial Day uh, be established as a national holiday and actually uh, set aside Memorial Day as a federal holiday. Today, as I mentioned a moment ago, I'm going to ask you just to remember not only to remember those that have given their life in the uh, fight for our freedom that we enjoy so much, but I'm going to ask you to uh, remember the greatest soldier that has ever lived, fought in the greatest battle ever fought, not just for freedom, but for you and I and people all over the world and in the fight for the freedom of our souls. I'm talking about the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life so that we might enjoy a relationship with God. This morning, I'm going to turn your attention, if you will, to Psalm 77. In Psalm 77, we find a psalmist who is overwhelmed with a feeling of loss and rejection. As you will find, he even feels rejected by God. But in the midst of the overwhelming issues facing his life, uh, he finds great comfort in just remembering. Notice, if you will, verse number one, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O oh God. And I groaned, I mused, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused, my spirit inquired, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? And I want you to notice what happens in verse number 10. The psalmist said, then I thought, to this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. And notice what he does in verse 11. In verse 11, he says, I remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all of your works. I consider all of your mighty deeds. Your ways, O Lord, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performed miracles. You display your power among the people. With your mighty arm, you redeem our people. You, uh, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The water saw you, O God. The water saw you and withered. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds, the clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. The arrows flashed back and forth. Your, your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The world trembled and quaked. You led, your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. Verse 19 is one of my favorite verses in this psalm. It talks about how your path led through the sea, even though your footprint was never seen. God walks in our world even today, and we never see his footprint upon the earth. Look at you would at verse 20. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Let me get you to just look back up in verse number 11. 
He says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I meditate. The idea of meditate here is to take those deeds that God has done and just rehearse them over and over in your mind. Rick Warren, in his book, The Purpose Driven Life, talks about the difference between worry and meditation. And when we worry about something, it's taking something negative and we just play it over and over in our mind, sometimes hundreds of times a day. But when we meditate, we take the good things, the happy things, the things that bring joy, and we purposely run those over and over and over again through our mind. That's exactly what the psalmist is talking about, remembering the deeds of the Lord, remembering his miracles of long ago. I will meditate run those things over and over in my mind on all of your works. And in verse number 13, your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? The psalmist is ta taking a time to pause and reflect upon the greatness of our God. We used to sing songs, great is thy faithfulness, or how great thou art. He is reflecting upon the greatness of God. Today, I would like for you to just pause with me and think about some of the great things that God has done in our life. Today is Memorial Day. Well, I mean, this is Memorial Weekend. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. And we will actually take some time to reflect upon all of those who have given the great sacrifice of laying down our lives for the freedoms that we enjoy. But today I want us as believers to reflect upon the great sacrifice that the Lord Jesus Christ gave for all mankind in that he laid down his life so we could experience <coughs> forgiveness of our sin. Notice if you would in God, John's gospel, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible doesn't hesitate to point out that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, many people will hesitate at that particular point, and they start began making excuses or talking about how they don't quite understand this issue of sin. A lot of people will tell you, I'm a pretty good guy. I don't cause trouble. I'm not out stirring up anything with other folks. But the Bible says that all have sinned. If you have been alive on the on fa face of this earth for any length of time, you know that sin runs rampant all across our globe. This morning, Terry and I got up, and she was wondering about the weather. She looked outside, and she wondered was the sun going to shine any at all today? And so I flipped on the TV to see if we could catch any uh, of the weather. And as soon as the TV came on, it began talking about a shooting that had happened sometime yesterday. You don't have to wait long or you don't have to look very far until you realize that we live in a broken world. And there are people who say, yeah, the world is broken but I didn't break it. No, you may not have been the one that broke the world, but all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says, as we read there a moment ago, John 3, 16, here's verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Listen, you didn't break the world, but God didn't break the world either. As a matter of fact, God's not trying to condemn the world. God is doing everything he can, even the sending of his own son into the world to offer forgiveness of sin, to offer a way in which we can have a right relationship with him. And for those who say, well, I've never done any major thing wrong. I'm a good boy. Let me ask you something. Do you have a personal relationship with with God through Jesus Christ. Look if you would at what John says in the very next verse. Whoever believes in him 
is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Folks, I want to tell you, if you're here today, you may be one of the best people in the world. But if you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible tells us clearly that you come into this world with a stamp of condemnation upon your soul. And what God is trying to do is not condemn you, but he is trying to uh, erase that mark of condemnation that stands upon your life. God wants you in a relationship with him. But it's more than just sinning and come short of the glory of God. Notice what Paul says a little bit later in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death. Folks, it's more than just the fact that we have sinned. The Bible says that the consequences of our sin is the mark of death upon our life. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1, the apostle Paul says that we are dead in our transgressions and in our sin. Uh, Paul will go back in verse uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Everybody say the word gift. God is trying to give you a gift. This is what he had said in John chapter 3. That God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Folks, God loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. And you can have that relationship if you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, back there in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, Paul had told us that you were dead in your transgressions and your sin. But he'll say just a verse or two later, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgression and in our sin. Now, let me take you back just very quickly. Uh, back in the book of Genesis, we find this particular verse, Genesis chapter 2, verse number 15. The Bible says in the Garden of Eden that the Lord God took man, put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to care for it. And then the Lord commanded the man, look around. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden. Now, I can't imagine how many trees there were to eat from in the Garden of Eden. But God invites man to look around and says, you are free to eat from anything you want in this garden. All of it belongs to you. But there in verse number 17, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, in ways beyond my ability to understand from you, that when man took from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he was just as alive as I am. And after he took from the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, he was just as alive as I am. But something happened in, inside of him in that he died. Those people in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1, where Paul says, as for you, you were dead. What Paul is referring to is what took place back in the Garden of Eden. Now, man continued to live even though there was something inside of him died that very day. He had a perfect ongoing relationship with God up until he took of that fruit. And when he took of that fruit, the Bible says he died at that very moment. He continued to live even though he was dead. That's why Paul says you are dead. 
because of what happened back in the garden when mankind chose to find their own way rather than obeying God, that's exactly what Paul is talking about. Now look, if you would, at 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9. John says, if we are willing, if we will just confess our sin, there are two things that God does and two things that God is. First of all, he tells us that God is faithful and he is just. He is faithful, you can count on him to do it, and he's just. He's going to do exactly what he says he will do. Now notice the two things that happens. If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just, and first of all, he will forgive you of your sin. Every single sin you've ever committed, God will forgive you of that sin. The second thing he's going to do is he's going to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. When John the Baptist saw Jesus Christ coming down the road, the first thing he said was, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And folks, I want to tell you today, if you're here, you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, if you will confess your sin, God is faithful and God is just, and he will forgive you of that sin, but he will wash away all the sin in your life. Now, Paul tells us exactly how easy it is to become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 10, verse number 9, Paul says, if we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord. That simple. Just confess. Jesus is Lord. But also he says, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with our heart that you believe and are justified and it is with the mouth that you confess and are saved. And then verse 13, one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This week we start our vacation Bible school. And one of the things we're going to talk to our children about every Wednesday in the month of June is how easy it is to put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to talk to them about how with their mouth they can confess that Jesus is Lord. And with their heart they can believe that God has raised him from the dead. But ultimately what we're going to stress to them is that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. One of my favorite Bible verses in Romans uh, comes in chapter 3 verse 22 and I especially Love the New Living Translation of that verse. It says, we are made right in God's sight when we trust Jesus Christ to take away our sin. And we can all be saved in this same way. Doesn't matter who we are. Doesn't matter what we have done. Several years ago, we had a man that attended our church. And he always came on Mother's Day. Anytime the choir was singing, he would he, I mean, singing a special uh, something. He, he always wanted to come. His wife was in the choir, and he didn't come on a regular basis, but he would come and support her on these special days. Well, he was leaving one Sunday. He happened to be here that day, and I said to him, you know, we would love to have you come be a regular part of our church. And I mean, there in the door of the church, he just looked at me as a preacher. You, you don't want me to be a part of your church. I said, well, sure we do. We'd love to have you be a part of our church. And he said, oh, but you got some, you got some church members. They, they don't want me to be a part of that church. And he began talking about all the different things he had done, things that people knew about him. And I thought about this verse. doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter what you've done. You can be brought into a right relationship with God. When you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation. Give you an opportunity just to open your heart and receive Jesus Christ as the Savior and Lord of your life. And once again, 
let me stress to you, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you have done. God wants to give to you forgiveness. The Bible says if we confess our sin, he's faithful, he's just, and he'll forgive us of our sin, and he'll cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And folks, you can leave this place today in a right relationship with God. If you'll trust Jesus Christ to take away your sin. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter what you have done. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for all of these that have gathered here on this special day in the life of our nation. As we pause as a church to reflect upon Memorial Day and those who have given their lives so that we can enjoy the freedoms we enjoy. But Father, today we want to remember something greater than just our physical freedoms or the freedoms we enjoy as a nation. We thank you today for what you have done for us through Jesus Christ, your very Son, as we, through him we can experience forgiveness from our sin, we can have our sin washed away, and we can be brought into a right relationship with you. Father, I pray for those that are here this morning that have never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord today. I pray that you'll help them to confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead and believe with every part of their fiber that whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they will be saved. Father, would you bless this time of invitation and decision? We commit this time to you and pray that your spirit would work in our midst today. And We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to have a hymn of invitation, and we're going to invite you just to stand right there where you are, and if there's a decision that you'd like to make, and if I can help you in that making that decision, I'd love to do so. I'll be standing here at the front. Let's stand together at this time as we sing. my reward and all of my devotion now there's nothing in this world that can ever satisfy through every trial my soul will sing Turning back, I've been set free. Christ is enough for me. Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in. my all in all, the joy of my salvation, and this hope will never fail, heaven is our home, through every storm, my soul will see. Jesus is here to come.
Sing this with me. Sing it out. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before. turning back no turning back the cross before me the world behind me no turning back no turning back Christ is enough Thank you guys for joining us for worship today. It's good to see each and every one of you. Uh, I'm glad you're here, and I hope that the person sitting next to you is glad. And if it's your wife and she's not glad, I'm sorry. But uh, I'm glad each of y'all are here. Um, VBS is coming up this week, and so listen, this is your, not your last reminder, because every week is there going to be a reminder about VBS for the entire month of June. So uh, if you're interested in being a part, helping out with VBS, uh, please let somebody know. I, was, I know Miss Sherry's out this week, but just show up Wednesday at 5.15. 5.15 and say, hey, I want to help with VBS. And we will find you a spot to help in VBS. Uh, there are always spots that we need help with. And so if you are interested in helping, we'd love to have you. Um, no evening service this evening. And there was something else. You know what? It's in here. So I'm just going to let you read it on your own. Uh, but if you... Uh, have any questions, love to talk to you guys. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I hope you guys have a wonderful time and uh, honor those who gave everything um, so that you can enjoy this weekend in, uh, in, in freedom. And so thank you for being here. I love y'all. It's good to see everybody. Y'all have a good night, day. <laughs>